looking good, doesn't it? All right, opening up the garage, getting into the lightning this morning here. All right, unhooked the charge port from the drive this morning, and uh, we'll go talk and cruise around. Start off the morning with a little bit of lithium here on uh, Sirius XM 34. Gosh, it sounds like a paid advertisement here, but this is like bringing me back to the 90s. It's awesome. Anyway, we will kill the music here for the drive. Hope everyone's having a good Monday morning post Super Bowl. I don't know who you guys are pulling for. I was going for the Eagles. Obviously, that didn't turn out so well, but it's not a big deal. Both those teams weren't really my favorites. <clears throat> I was only pulling for the Eagles because I used to live up in New Jersey when I was stationed in the Air Force, uh, flying up there, and we were just outside Philadelphia. So I said, you know, I'm going to pull for the Eagles, but I thought it was a good game. I didn't like how it ended, but oh well. <clears throat> Let's see, it is 43 degrees outside, 73% state of charge. Started the morning at 85%. Took the kids, the older two, to school. Just took my other son to preschool. That's where we're leaving from now. So, um, left you guys on that last video. Just sort of uh, ticked off with the latest air I had on the truck. <clears throat> it has not returned, which is awesome. Um, got back uh, Friday evening no issues on the truck so to follow up on it real quick I actually reached out to Ford Motor Company they have a battery electric vehicle team I uh, showed them all the stuff or sent them all the details on what's been happening and they were able to tap into the truck remotely I guess and they saw like two um, two error codes that were that were stored on February 1st and February 9th. The odd thing is, I don't remember a glitch at all <laughs> on February 1st. And February 9th, I was actually at work, so the truck was sitting in the airport, and the, the customer service rep had said, said in her email that the truck got an over-the-air update on the 9th as well, and I can't see that whatsoever. Like, I got back in the truck, I see no evidence of an update. It still says, you know, congrats, you're on 4.11, power up, blah, blah, blah. So. I got a lot of questions about that. I emailed emailed back and I have not gotten a follow-up yet. But long story short, she said, we don't see anything stored. If you get those codes again, just swing by the dealer. But otherwise, you're, you're okay to drive. So, you know, let's be honest. I'm just talking this up to just, uh, you know, electrons, right? It's got some, these things all have gremlins. They're all big driving computers, just like my airplanes. They're all computers, you know, with a little bit of human intervention. And... I feel a little bit better that it hasn't happened. I mean, that was a pretty, that could have been a pretty serious error code. I'm going to watch it. I'll let you guys know if it comes up again, of course. But, you know, uh, today I'm back to not hating on my truck. You know, uh, you know, it just drives so nice. But I have a couple questions. And the couple questions are, the first one, so they what can they see, basically, on their end? Like, they saw codes that I obviously didn't see or they didn't show up. And the ones that I mentioned they showed up, they obviously didn't report about. So that's question number one. Question number two is, can they send over-the-air updates? Are they sending more than the ones that we get notified about? And my sort of hunch is yes on that. I'm just going off, just off nothing scientific. Just Tesla owners, they get updates all the time. I mean, obviously they could tap into these trucks, Ford can. So I wonder if they're sending, they're constantly checking to see the data that the truck is putting out. Maybe they are sending over-the-air updates. I don't know. But uh, those are sort of the questions I have for Ford. I don't know if any of you guys know anything better. You know, we'll see on the forums. The Tesla Model Y behind me. Tesla's all over this town. And uh, it's pretty cool because we're getting looks all the time because we're like the only lightning that's in town around here so far. It's been maybe one other one that I've seen, my neighbors. And I hardly see him drive it. But anyway, I'm loving the truck again. And, you know, I want to get into to a few things I was thinking about this weekend. And how I think I like this truck more now than the Power Boost. Actually, I, I know I like it more than the Power Boost. Reason number one, you've heard on other videos, I've said it basically every video, the ride is absolutely fantastic. It is smooth. It feels like a luxury car. Best way to describe it is, is just luxury, it's quiet, it's smooth. A um, couple reasons for that. You've got that independent rear suspension. The truck weighs a ton with these batteries, okay? So it's got a nice, like, heft to it, I guess, or weight. The batteries are down low, so it handles really nice. Um, this is the best handling truck out of the three, hands down. Um, 
The other ones, you know, you, you do the standard truck ride with that, that live axle. You hit any kind of bump in a turn, the whole truck chassis gets unsettled. I got used to it. Not a big deal. Coming from cars and SUVs, it took me a little while. I didn't like the ride of a truck. I knew I was getting into, but it just doesn't ride like a car. It's, it's not going to. I'm pleasantly surprised by the Lightning. This thing rides awesome. It feels like a unibody. It feels a lot like a... I don't know, a lot like the SUVs that we're all accustomed to. And the handling's great. A lot of that probably has to do over the power boost of the fact, like I mentioned, I had it leveled, two inch level. I was not happy with the handling on the level. I thought it rolled a lot. I mean, obviously it's not a sports car. I get that, right? The, the thing's top heavy. It's not meant to be cornering. But this truck, the Lightning, just handles so well. And I'm not pushing it in the corners, but. I just can't describe it on words. You're just going to have to drive one of these. Many of you out there, the owners or people that have test driven one, you could probably attest. It just rides nice. Number two, why I like this thing hands down over the power boost is just how smooth it is. Okay. So I will go on record the power boost. I was very happy with that truck. I was very torn on getting rid of for this. Um, many people on the internet, the forums say that the power boost has a interesting transmission um you know the, the it's a 10 speed a lot of the ford forms say that the transmission shaky or sort of bounces rough through gears on the two that i had this year i must have been lucky i thought the transmission was really smooth a few times during the break-in within the first thousand miles it sort of clunked around a few times on a uh, upshift and uh, more, actually more likely on the downshift. It was the weird, it was the 2-3 gear that would typically get you. And it would be in a weird situation where, say, you're creeping up to a light and you're going like five miles an hour and it's just slowly cycling through the gears. It would be like that. You're coasting up to the light and then all of a sudden, bam, you know, you sort of feel this weird shift out of nowhere. And when it throws into two, it sort of slam into two. That was weird. You know, the forms are littered with people going in for transmission issues, either not replacement, but to, uh, an update for the, the shift tables. Also, you have the hybrid integration, right? I was worried about that. It was actually very pretty, pretty smooth. But you definitely knew when the hybrid was coming on and is off. Now, you could really learn as an owner how to manipulate the throttle to get into hybrid. And it was, I'll give it to Ford. I thought it was extremely smooth, but it's its never going to be like the Lightning, okay? This thing, I mean, look, it's just, just no, no drama, just speed. I put the pedal down, it moves. It's effortless. You don't hear any noise. You don't get any transmission shifting. And that's just the nature of electric vehicles. Uh, the hybrid, you're going to feel it. And so I will say hands down, the Lightning is a smoother truck. That's another pro over the hybrid. A lot of people... Uh, my wife was one of them, just did not like the whole, she could feel every time it went into hybrid and off a of hybrid and the transmission hesitates to get into gear because it's going from electric mode to gas mode. I, uh, you know, I'm pretty picky on cars. I thought Ford did a really good job in that truck. I'm not taken away from that truck, but just compared to Lightning, different driving experience, this truck is way smoother. <clears throat> Those are the two biggest things I want to say right now is the handling and just how smooth it is or why the Lightning is just a better truck. Number three, this is totally subjective, but for my lifestyle, hands down, this is the better truck I've discovered after a little over a month. It's just for what I do with day-to-day -day driving. Electric cars are not for everybody. I'm the first to admit that. I've got some comments on these videos. A lot of people, you know, um, you know, I guess what do you want to call them? Electric car haters. Uh, you know, they maybe they think I have an agenda here, like everyone that buys an electric car you know, it's making a political statement and I'll keep this short because I'm not getting into politics on the video, but I'm further from the farthest from the truth on that one. I bought an electric car. I'm not saving earth. I am buying it because I love technology and I love the speed of electric cars. And I drive around town a hundred percent of the time, maybe 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay. So I'm dealing a truck along with most Americans. Look, truck, truck, truck. I'm all over here. We're passing five F-150s in the last five seconds. So I'm driving like most Americans, which means I got truck for the, the convenience. I use the bed. I go to Home Depot. We throw kids crap in there all the time. I'm hauling trash. I'm doing whatever, truck things. But let's be honest, I'm not towing. I'm not needing 12,000 pounds of towing capability. I'm not doing anything crazy. So I had to be honest with myself. And why am I dealing a 
internal combustion F-150 around just wasting gas to the tune of 18 to 19 miles a gallon in my 5.0 and then later uh, much better 24 miles to the gallon in my hybrid. It just is stupid, at least for me. And I'm not saying you're out there if you have a truck like this, you're, you're not stupid. Just for me, I had to be honest. I'm, I'm, what am I using a truck for? I'm basically a glorified grocery getter, like 99% of my neighbors that all have trucks, okay? So I'm living, like I said, here in Alabama, everyone has trucks. I talk to my neighbors, we all laugh. Hardly anybody ever uses it. I have a buddy with an F-250 down the street, has never towed once, has the diesel. It's a sweet truck, don't lie. I'm not gonna lie, it's, but it's we're, we're not using these trucks. So for that, hands down, I'm sorry, the argument, the electric wins all day all day long on that okay i've already got the numbers in a month for my driving you know just under a thousand miles i'm paying about 30 bucks electric cost i just got my first utility bill it was spot on with what the app showed you do that in my gas truck i was paying about 120 bucks a month in gas for about similar mileage so it's just it's it's a third i'm paying a third of the cost okay but i'm not blind electric costs are going to go up again i'm not trying to save the environment so for all those people that want to make a comment, I think they're interesting. I, I love the assumptions people make. But for those of you watching this and you just want to hate on it, that's cool. I, I'm not trying to sell you my electric truck. It works for me. It may not work for you. The hybrid was great. I thought I could easily have lived with that truck. I actually miss that truck in the Lariat form. I don't miss the gas of it. I mean, it was a great power plant, but I do miss some of the Lariat features. We'll cover that in another video. That's sort of talking more trim level, but truck for truck, the Lightning is hands down the better truck for the family suburban person. And that's what I do. So anyway, um, I'll think of some more cons because those are the pros. There's cons, right? I mean, I can't, I'm not going to take this on a long highway trip. I'm just not going to waste my time, you know, spending four hours supercharging everywhere and going through that mess, but I don't need to. And I was honest with myself when I bought the vehicle, my wife and I, what we're going to use this truck for, what we need. When we, we have a large family, when we go on the road, we're not fitting in the truck anyway. So it's sort of a moot point. But anyway, uh, those are just my thoughts. Just want to get some content out. I know you guys were waiting to hear if the truck had been messed up since <laughs> Wednesday, but everything's working great. We'll see how it goes. Again, I'll report any kind of changes. Those are just my thoughts on this uh, Monday morning. You guys have a great rest of the week. Talk to you later. By the way, update on using the uh, 110 here in the garage. Works great. Charged, it's charging from 60 to 80%, no problem. No problem overnight. So I'm definitely, when I'm over here in this third car garage, which I don't have the 1450, I'll be using the Ford Mobile Charger. No complaints there. I mean, it adds what I need. Unless I'm driving a lot in one day, it's it's doing the job. So it's going to be a, nice to have a backup charging system other than having to always be in my wife's garage all the time. So anyway, I know a couple of people were wondering about that. Uh, that is my solution. It'll work well. It's not going to pre-charge, they say, or excuse me, pre-condition, but it's working great to add the mileage on a light use day.